G'day guys, this is Liam, and uh, this will be part two of the Improving the Beaching End uh, Station series. So, uh, if you're watching this, you'll probably uh, have seen the first uh, episode in this short series that I'm doing. Um, and basically, just to recap, in the last one, we looked at uh, completely redoing the platform, and this involved uh, taking away the fences, taking away the lamps, water crane, uh, all the, pretty much all the platform tiles, and then uh, resurfacing the platform with uh, some new tiles and uh, gravel. Plus, um, also we uh, changed up a field um, and got about halfway through doing that. So in this part, we'll be continuing with the platform. Um, we'll be building a station garden for the pagoda. Repainting the station fences uh, to a more appropriate colour, and uh, we'll also be making a new station sign and hopefully finishing off that paddock. So uh, yeah, we'll crack on now. Right, so here in front of you, you can see uh, the old station fences. Now these are ratio kit, and they're actually it's actually not a bad wee kit. Um, very basic, but you know it's good. It's a good uh, representation of. Uh, station fence, uh, and they also marketed as being GWR ones, so I can't complain there. But as you can see, the colour I painted them in was this, the colour I used to use for lightstone, which wasn't bad, but it's a bit too orangey and a bit too bright and almost yellow. Um, and I'm not quite satisfied with that, so I want to try and uh, use the two colours that I use at the moment for light and dark stone for everything, make it sort of standard across uh, the layout. So, I'm going to be repainting these uh, very simply. I don't have a, an airbrush or any of that fancy kit. I'm just going to be using uh, the regular paint that I have. But uh, basically the paint that I use is whiskey from Resin. And I water that down quite a bit and apply several layers over a period of time. Um, which uh, produces a nice flat effect uh, for the paint. It dries nice and flat. Um, and you don't really get too many brush strokes as well with it being quite watered down. So um, I'll be hitting it with some of that now and um, we'll get back to you very shortly. So guys, the next thing we're going to look at is actually lighting for the station building. Now I have already um, actually uh, got the lighting wired up inside the station building, but we're now going to have to sort out um, how to get the uh, electricity to the lights on the station. So my method is going to be quite simple, and basically it's going to involve these things. Uh, some of you may recognise it, it's out of, I don't know how international they were, but it was out of a, a kit that you used to, to get. I, I used to get them as a kid. There was quite a few of them that they, that they produced. There was a company called Brainbox. 
Now these wee electronics kits, and they came, they stuck together with these little uh, button type things, like you get on, you know, having your, having your jeans or whatever, and they're very simple. Um, basically, they just clip together. So what I'm going to do is chop this in half, solder some wires to each bit, and then run them down through this hole. I've already done the station, uh, as you can see there, just chopped it in half and soldered the wires on. And they go inside the station building. Um, so yeah, we'll do that now. The building has uh, the lights on and we've switched the lights off uh, around it obviously so uh, it's now nicely lit up and I've got my manor just sitting sitting nearby uh, nice and calm from the light of the station still got to do a little bit of work about light bleed and all that but we'll sort that out cross that bridge when, it, when we come to it I was thinking probably blue tack lining the inside could work quite well um, the building does have an interior, but it's not sitting in there at the moment, so if you look through, you'll actually be able to see the plastic through the windows. But, um, yeah, not bad now. It's coming along. Right, so now that the lighting is done, we can sort of turn our attention to um, the extension of the loop. Now, there's a few options we have here for installing a set of points along this straight here. We can either cut a section of track out along there, and then have the points running off there through, we'll cut away this bit, and have it extending onto this piece of track here, and moving the signal box to here. However, that would mean that we'd have to find a means of cutting the track that we could use inside the confined space. And without the um, without a, a Dremel tool to hand, um, this could be quite difficult. The other option we have is to pull up this piece of track, which would mean probably also pulling up this piece of track and the track underneath the bridge. And this has all been ballasted uh, and can be quite difficult with the bridge in the way. Either way, we're really shooting ourselves in the foot. But I think, to be honest, with what we have available, the option of ripping up the track is probably the best option, as much as I hate to say it. So um, we'll probably be doing that, and um, I suppose it makes for a good watch really, but um, it's a shame that that has to be done, but I think it's for the greater good in the long run. So um, yeah, we'll crack on with that. So for pulling up the ballast, we first of all uh, tried by uh, just seeing if it would come unstuck um, with the dry ballast to see if it would just sort of uh, come undone. But unfortunately this wasn't the case, so we then had to douse it basically with uh, wet water to soften the, uh, the glue in the ballast, uh, and that slowly started to work a bit better. Um, and so we just kept spraying it. and. Um, yeah, slowly it started to come unstuck.
so once the uh, points actually started to come up, we had to uh, actually cut the dropper wires with a pair of scissors, like you see here. Um, and once they were cut, the points were basically free. Right, so now as you can see, we've pulled out, sorry, that's just the trough thing. Uh, we've pulled out all the, um, all the track, well, the, the end of the loop, and all the ballast along here with a signal box sat. Um, and now the plan is to obviously take out this bit of hill and, um, yeah, bring the points up to there, probably get some new points during the week, uh, do a Hatton's order, and, um, yeah, well, so, uh, keep keep you updated on uh, that. Yes, yeah, so you can see it's very messy along here. Um, all the gunky ballast that's too wet to be vacuumed up yet. So we're going to let that dry for a bit, let it dry, scrape it all off, and then vacuum it up. Um, should be nice and easy. Right. So while we're waiting for the ballast and stuff down here to dry up and sort itself out. Um, I'll repaint those platform tiles at last, so uh, we'll do that now. So now we've pulled up all of the track, and to be honest with you, beaching in now looks like something out of the 1960s. Uh, maybe uh, beaching's end has happened. Uh, to beaching end. <laughs> and um, basically that's all I'm going to do on the track work for now. I'm going to leave that hanging. But now we'll come on to, uh, like I said at the start, doing a garden for the pagoda. Also I forgot to mention that uh, the paint is now obviously all dried um, it does look a little bit scruffy um, but that's sort of what I was going for uh, basically with this station you know set around the 30s the 40s you know it's probably been already around in theory imaginarily it's probably already been around for about 40 years or so uh, plus uh, it's during 
sort of around the time of World War II, possibly just after, possibly just before. So it wouldn't be particularly clean. Um, so when it comes to weather this, that'll just help a bit. Uh, but it's already scruffy, just adds to the effect a little bit. So um, yeah, it's actually come out alright now. I think the, just the one coat is uh, quite enough. Right, so I've now uh, put some gravel in. Lightly, it's not glued down or anything yet. It's all just sitting loose. Um, and this is roughly where the pagoda is going to sit. Uh, I think that actually looks quite good. So now I'm going to work towards actually making a base for it, a wee path, and a garden for it. Right, so now as you can see, I've done the ballast, it's all gluing now so I won't touch it, but I've come in with a wee piece of MDF and I've scooped out the squares on either side of the path, and one there as well, and this will be, uh, will have probably sleepers around it and then dirt in its place, I like the idea of the, the uh, actual garden being sunken level if not slightly lower down than the actual gravel, makes it look like it's been dug out and properly done. Um, and obviously there's the path running up the middle there. So I'm just waiting for that to dry. I'm leaving the uh, lumps at the end that are built up there. I'm just going to let that dry and then pull them off. Otherwise it's going to get messy if I try to remove them now with it being wet. So I'll come back when that's all dried and um, we'll start filling in some plants and stuff. Right, so I've now uh, momentarily fitted the fences and the water crane just to see how it all looks. I think it's actually looking all right. Didn't get round to... Um, making the sign in this video but I have a special plan on how I'm going to make that so uh, I'll leave that as a bit of a surprise to the viewers um, and possibly that might be done in the next video I really don't know but um, it's just a matter of finding the time to get the sign done it's going to be a bit of a, a project really on its own but um, there will be a special feature on that at some point coming round we've still got the pagoda all drying the ballast here is still not solid um, and basically, I think uh, this video is getting quite long now, it's getting on about 20 minutes, so uh, I think I'll call it a day here guys, and um, hope you've enjoyed this uh, 
uh, second part of the series, and uh, we'll get part three up to you hopefully a bit sooner than uh, the gap between this and the last one. Um, but that really depends. I do now have a set of points to go there. <laughs> um, and so the track laying will probably be uh, the next step. This field still hasn't been done uh, simply because I haven't been able to get it attached to here. Um, and so I haven't been able to blend them. Plus I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the grass on this module yet. I'm not quite happy with what how this has come out. It's too... Uh, it doesn't look so much on too bad on camera, but it's too goldeny. It's too dry. I'd like it to be a bit more green, like I've gone for on here. So um, yeah. Anyways, um, if you've enjoyed this, please um, feel free to comment. I really do appreciate it when people comment on my videos. Um, it it really does uh, mean quite a lot to me when uh, people you know comment and say things I've liked or even things I don't like because uh, you know it helps me to understand uh, how other people view the layout because it is hard when you're building it yourself to see how other people you know what other people think of it so uh, any thoughts or any ideas please let me know I really do appreciate it when people tell me their ideas or you know uh, what they think so uh, yeah feel free to do that um, I, I don't bite <laughs> and um, yeah, also, if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe, um, of course, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>